Hello, BookTube. I wanted to come to you with a two-part book acquisition. Um, these are all the books I've added to my library or I'm in the process of adding to my library because, of course, I have to find shelf space, right? And reorganize a little bit and probably get rid of some other stuff. Um, but I'm having to do it in two parts because it's just a lot of books because of the opportunity arose, right? So you know, you have your weeks where you don't get anything and you have your, your bumper weeks. So there's a bit of a bumper crop here. The titles are all over the place. So um, I didn't go out shopping after the Brattle visit, which you can see on Steve Donahue's channel where I was with Steve, uh, Steve uh, Donahue. I was with... Um, uh, Scott Danielson and Jason Harrigan and my wife Deb, we all met down in Boston at the Brattle, did a video there and went out to lunch and just had a wonderful time. So I thank those gentlemen very much. Um, a meetup that took, it was years in the making, so it's, it, was, it was quite exciting. And hopefully there'll be meetups with some of you in, in the future. So this, this is one of the benefits of BookTube that I enjoyed very much. So I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to go fairly quickly because, like I said, there's a lot here. Um, I don't even know how I'm going to do this uh, logistically um, because there are so many books. I'll just try to – I may, you may see me leaning down, especially in the beginning, to get the books in into a spot on the ground. So the first thing here is a uh, paperback, Leo Tolstoy, uh, Tolstoy, The Death of Ivan Illich. And other stories, a Signet Classic. Lovely Orthodox painting on there. Um, so it's Signet Classic has an afterwards by uh, David Margershak. And it's um, not only the death of Ivan Illich, but uh, Family Happiness, the Kreutz, uh, Kreutzer Sonata, and Master and Man. So these little Signet Classics are always fun. Uh, well, I'll put that right over here on the floor. The next is a history. Uh, this is a trade paperback, a smaller sized one. This is Alvin M. Josephy Jr., The Civil War in the American West. So I lived in New Mexico for a while and realized that there was some Civil War action there. Uh, you know, we tend to think of it as an East Coast thing. Um, it primarily was, but not entirely. So you have the, the Glory Road to New Mexico, um, Anguish in the Northern Plains, the Ordeal of General Banks, War on the Western Trails and the Wasteland, and then uh, Fading Trumpets. So, uh, yeah, I, I'd be really interested in to read this. I know this gentleman uh, was uh, Alvin M. Josephy Jr. was a uh, longtime I believe, editor at American Heritage, which was a magazine, American History magazine that's wonderful. I have tons of them, tons of them. In fact, I need to build shelves for them. <laughs> but I'm looking, at, I know I can write. So I have, I didn't know about this and I've never read it. So, so that's a good thing. All right. Next is a collection I'm making. Now I became familiar with Joseph Campbell the mythographer, at the same time most people did. And that was with the uh, Bill Moyers PBS special. What was it the mythic image or I, I, it was something Joseph Campbell on myths. But, and he's such a grand storyteller, sit down storyteller, that I went out and bought his uh, Masks of God, which is four volumes. What is it? Primitive. Uh, I, I don't know, it's Occidental, Asian, and, you know, creative, I think. I'm, I'm messing that up, but you get the general idea. And then, then I started picking up other Flight of the Wild Gander. Um, I used to have the big Atlas series. Um, I saw recently, or not so recently, on Felicity McCarthy's Instagram that she has them, and they're wonderful. Uh, the Way of the Animal Powers or something like that. So, um... But I have been collecting him. Uh, the Hero with a Thousand Faces is another one I have and have read. This is Thou Art That, uh, Transforming Religious Metaphor. It's in this wonderful set I've been... Now, my Mass of God and all that aren't in this set, but this is this Collected Works of Joseph Campbell. 
So this will go right in my uh, my collection. But I'll actually read, that's a short thing. I'll read it pretty quick. This next one I have read. I just didn't have a copy and I want a copy. This is an Odyssey, A Father, A Son, and an Epic by Daniel Mendelssohn. This is a really good story uh, about a young, a young man, a, a, a full-grown adult man who um, is a humanities-type uh, professor um, and a writer. I think his father was an engineer or something like that, but his father started taking his son's classes, and it ends up in this, not only talking about the epic itself, but their life and uh, relationship. And I, this is a book I'd recommend, but I wanted to have it on my shelf. It's a uh, Alfred Knopf, 19, uh, 2017. Boy, I still say 19 sometimes. That's that's a bad sign, isn't it? This next one, James uh, McPherson. Uh, I've read his Battle Cry of Freedom, and I read his bit on the Gettysburg Address and the Battle of Gettysburg type thing. This is one of his I didn't know about. This is uh, War on the Waters, the Union and Confederate Navies, 1861-1865. Really looking forward to this. Um, what was this post? Got a lot of photos in it. This is uh, 2012, the University of North Carolina Press. This is a book club edition. So I, I, I like this sort of thing, so we will see. Then one I've had before, it's a little tattered dust jacket. This is Greece and Rome, National Geographic. See, it's all ripped up. You could just take the dust jacket off, which I'll do for illustrative purposes, because the hardback, bare hardback is beautiful. So, and here are the end papers. These National Geographic books um, are just fantastic. I always loved them. And I, I wish I hadn't gotten rid of as many of them as I did. So I believe this is a fold-out, yeah. So there's a the fold-out, Alexander. But then you go to the next side. There's a big old map. These things are really worth getting. Just to sit down and enjoy uh, let's see if I can find, yeah, see they did original paintings to depict life at the time. Uh, then in the back, in this little sleeve, let's see, take it out here for you, try to hold it up so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, that's really coordinated, huh? Come on. You got one of these, you know, wonderful uh, National Geographic things inside it. I might as well just take it out. Oh, this is the uh, realm of gods and heroes. It's hard to see, and then on the other side, big old map. I, I love these things. Now, yeah. doing this from where I'm sitting is not going to be easy, so I'll do it like this. I'll get it after I talk to you, otherwise I'll be doing it all day. So I'll probably get rid of that dust jacket. Next thing I got is uh, On the Way to Language, Martin Heidegger. I've read Heidegger before. This is not one I've read, so it's just a little Harper torch, a Harper and Row. I don't know if they... Yeah, they don't call it a Harper Torch, but Harper and Row Publishers. It's a little bit of philosophy. Um, I have another one of his, so I might as well do them at the same time. And then uh, one I have read, but years ago, Martin Heidegger, An Introduction to Metaphysics. Might be really nice to revisit. And this is what Yale University Press, a little paperback thing. Then, University of Press of Virginia in Charlottesville, was a uh, Tom Thomas Jefferson landscape architect with plenty of illustrations 
I've read stuff about his gardening, about his library, uh, about the building of Monticello itself. I've visited there. My dad used to live not too far from there. So um, I'm always interested in this. I just finished Dum Dumas Malone's, uh, what is it, six volumes? His biography of Thomas Jefferson, which I absolutely love. So, yeah. Always, always fun to have more of that stuff. Then here's Annie Dillard. Teaching a Stone to Talk, Expedition and Encounters. Um, I've read her Pilgrim at uh, Tinker Creek. Uh, who's this? This is another Harper book, but this is called Colophon Books. Um, I can't read the rest of it. So, oh, Colophon uh, Books forward slash CN, whatever that means. So, Annie Dillard's a great writer. Um, more than happy to find something else of hers. Another one that I've read but don't have in my library, my home library, is uh, Paul Tillich, uh, The Courage to Be. Um, it is uh, Yale University Press again. There's the theologian himself, a huge figure in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Um, I stud we studied him pretty extensively when I was in grad school, so nice to have a copy. Hopefully I'll read it again or who knows. Then here is a nice uh, quality paperback book club, if those of you who remember them. Um, this is Kaffa, The Complete Stories and Parables with a Ford by Joyce Carol Oates. So uh, nice to have. Quality paperback book club was always fun. They had some pretty good titles over the years. Um, so this uh, but, 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 uh, looks like they're doing a... A reprint of something from Shockin' Books, which is a great publisher. So it has um, The Judgment, Metamorphosis, uh, In the Penal Colony, uh, Hunger Artist, little, uh, A Little Woman, Children on the Country Road. It has a lot more than that. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So, uh, cough guy taking short doses, small doses, I guess is what you'd say. Then this one here looks a little plain. It's got the little uh, paper, you know, pasted on paper uh, title, and it is Gutenberg to Planton. So that you know it's about the early printers. And Gutenberg to Planton, an outline of the early history of printing by uh, George Parker Winship, Cambridge University Press, 1930. I always love reading these. Um, let's see, give me some, uh, this is sort of what it looks like on the inside, you'll have some different kinds of script that they're trying to print, um, and then I think in the end here they have Cristo Plantons, uh, printer's mark yeah so always with my my books about books this next one I actually have the companion book with the same dust jacket and I was thrilled to find this this is collected sonnets of Edna um, St. Vincent Millay that always throws me a little bit lovely thing I've got I don't know if you can see it above my head I have the the uh the lyrics. So the other one's called Collected Lyrics. This is a companion volume. This uh, Harper and Row Publishers. Uh, when did this come out? Do, 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 do. Uh, looks like about 1941. They got a big list of dates for it. So the, the print makes it nice and easy to type, to read and enjoy. So that will go right next to the other volume. Then this one, hmm. So when I was in the Brattle with um, uh, Steve Donahue, uh, Scott Danielson, and uh, Jason Harrigan, uh, and wandering around, I found, uh, and I've already shown it before, it's right over there, the big white square, well, going the wrong way, right there. Uh, Right there. Uh, letters of Seamus Heaney. Now, I had a paperback 
that wasn't very well made of this volume here. And this is Seamus Heaney Selected Poems, 1966 to 1987. So lovely, lovely thing to have. But there was more. So when I opened it up, it said, it's an inscription from uh, Haney in 1991. And there was even more. So this is uh, for Strauss and Giroux, New York. And this came out in 1990. In the back, tipped in, there was, from a speaking uh, event, some ephemera. The first was some of these printed up Haney poems that they must have given out, I guess, when you... We went to the top. Then um, a, a thing on Irish studies at Pine Manor College. I don't know why that was in there, but there must be some connection. Must be where the speech was, right? Well, it was the Helen Temple Cook Founders Day Convocation and Poetry Reading honoring Seamus Heaney. Professor of Poetry at Oxford University and Boylston Professor of Rhetoric and Oratory at Harvard University, who will read from his works. And it was on Wednesday, the 17th of April, 1991. Half past 11 o'clock, Ellsworth, uh, Ellsworth Hall, Pine Manor uh, College. So this is the program. And... All this stuff was tipped in, so the person may have just, well, obviously did get this book when they were there. They purchased it, and uh, uh, Seamus Heaney was kind enough to, uh, and it does say April 91, kind enough to uh, sign it for them, and they kept the ephemera that went with it, and now it'll go on my shelf. It replaces a paperback copy that I already gave away. This is much better on every level. It's better made. Um, it's in very good condition, and then, of course, it has all that association stuff with it. And we're not done. So I, I got more here, and I'm just buried. So next thing is, speaking of Seamus Heaney, uh, this is Beowulf, a verse translation. This is by Michael Alexander. This is a penguin. Um, I have Burton Raffle, J.R. Tolkien, Seamus Heaney, and one other, which was also a penguin, but a different person. Translations of uh, Beowulf, and I'm a big fan of Beowulf. This is a little older, but glad to add it to my um, Beowulf collection. Then we have a couple of these books that sort of got a common thing. These are Harper. This one's a Harper Torch book. This is called The Puritan Family um, by Edmund Morgan. Edmund S. Morgan, excuse me. Uh, Religion and Domestic Relations in 17th Century New England, where my ancestors were. That's where they were at. So I always try to learn when I can. Just knowing where you're from is... And what the lifestyle of your ancestors was, to me, is, is uh, adds a little bit to your life. Another similar thing is Ye Heart of a Man by Lisa Wilson, The Domestic Life of Men in Colonial New England. So there's a focus here on men. It's Yale University Press. And what's the date on this? So this one's 1999. So again, just to learn more. Uh, not, neither of these have I read, nor have read this one, which is probably the most interest to me, because right in the back of my house is where some captives were taken uh, by Native Americans north of Canada after they attacked uh, villages. Puritans Among the Indians, Accounts of Captivity and Redemption, 1676 to 1724, edited by Alden T. Vaughan and Edward W. Clark. So this will be narratives, what happened to them, uh, what routes did they take, um, how did they integrate with not only the native after, if they if they lived through the ordeal, not all of them did. Uh, the torture could be pretty horrific sometimes. As we see here, somebody's about to get off. <coughs> Excuse me. But when they did integrate did they integrate with the French up in the Quebec, where they often sold as household um, servants? 
or did they integrate into the tribal communities? So, um, and, and not everybody did the same thing. Some were ransomed immediately, so by relatives back in New England. So I'm sure I will learn a lot. Next one here is another trade paperback. This is Washington's Immortals, the unstored, untold story of an elite regiment who changed the course of the revolution by Patrick K. O'Donnell. This thing has got quite a reputation. I've read literally hundreds and hundreds of Revolutionary War books in my life. Um, but I've heard really good things about this one. I think it has to do with the Maryland. Uh, just see if I can see real quick. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I can't see here, but I think they were from Maryland. This one's fun. The Hungry Ear, Poems of Food and Drink, edited by Kevin Young. This is Bloomsbury book. We have, uh, let's see, it's an anthology that was put out in 2012. Got some good poets in here, with Seamus Heaney, uh, Mary Oliver, Galway Canal, Wendell Berry, Louise Gluck, Robert Frost, um, you'll see Elizabeth Bishop, Mark Doty. I mean, it's, this is just a couple pages of the, there's a lot of poems in there. Uh, Seamus Heaney again, Donald Hall, who I really like. Um, yeah, Mary Oliver again, uh, Jane Kenyon. So it's quite a, so here, here's Billy Collins, also Buco. <laughs> so, I mean, it's probably just fun to sit down and read and make yourself hungry. Then here, um, this was a great find. This is Wild Western Stories from the Grand Old Pulps, edited by Bill Pronzoni, who does a ton of editing. Um, and this has stories by Max Brand, Clarence Mulford, uh, William McLeod Rain, Luke Short, Wayne D. Overholzer, uh, w. Ryerson Johnson, Dan Cushman, H. A. De, uh, DeRosso, Thomas Thompson, Frank Bonham, Les Savage Jr., and Elmore Leonard. Quite a quite a lineup there. Um, so yeah, just thrilled to find it. Uh, when was this thing published? 1986. So, so I will be getting to that. I like a little collections of short stories because I don't have to invest a ton of time. And then the last thing I'm going to do in this particular haul is, um, which is part one, I'm going to do Walter D. Lemaire's um, Down, A Down Dairy, uh, illustrated by Dorothy P. Lathrop. This guy was immensely popular at the turn of the last century. Um, I've never read this before. Um, wonderful little illustration. So I'll give it a read for fun. This is Wild Side Press, which, um, you know, it's probably print on demand or something like that. I don't know if I'm wrong. I'm sorry. So uh, there's no Steve Pyramid coming here because that, that's literally a mountain of books. Um, um, to, the next book haul, part two, will be quite a bit different. But um, I thought I'd get these done so you can see what I had. If you've read these, have comments about them, please. I love to read them. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this has been a really good week, but I, I think I better start learning how to build some nice bookshelves, right? Because uh, for the most part, the shelf space is getting tight, um, which is fine. I get what I want and then weed out what I maybe have moved on from. So Today's the 22nd, September, so if I'm right, that's uh, International Hobbit Day, or just Hobbit Day, or whatever you call it. So happy Hobbit Day. What could be more fun than that, right? So thank you, BookTube.